Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, let's worship him just a little more. Mashamahangandala megite. Halema. Flomboda boshi flohostikete. Thank you, Father, for heavens. Heaven's blessings. Heaven's presence. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, we're empowered. Thank you, we're equipped. Oh, thank you, Father. For the realm you've called us to walk in and to move in. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah, we'll walk in a higher place. We'll move up to a higher place. We'll live in a higher place. Even in this walk. Even in this climb. <laughs> well, that's the plan. It was a plan from the beginning. The plan for man was to walk in the glory of God. And yes, that glory was tainted. That glory was rejected. Oh, but that glory through the Son of Glory has been restored and has been wrought for man, for those who walk according to the Father's redemptive plan. And as you walk with him and listen to his voice and allow his word to have his place, oh yeah, there'll be manifestations, there'll be demonstrations of the glory of God in your life today and in the life of man. So rise up. Take your place. Put behind you the things that have hindered your race. And step in. Ha, 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 Where I have caused man to begin in that place of the glory in that place of the manifest presence where you'll experience, yea, even the fullness of the Spirit in your life, even the anointing of the Spirit upon you to walk in victory and minister to those around you. Oh, glory be to God, because that's the hour that you're in now for the fullest manifestation beginning to be realized. And it shall surely, it shall surely come to pass that the glory of the Lord will fill all the earth. It shall be seen, it shall be known, it must be so. Ha, ha, ha. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Say, it shall be in my life, heaven on earth, the glory of God manifesting in me, manifesting on me, and manifesting through me. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Praise God. Well, let several people around you know you're... You're so glad to be in church with them today, and, and you can be seated. Praise God. Well, it's, uh, it's time to finish up 
on this series we started at the beginning of the year. You, say, you might say, Pastor, I was beginning to wonder when you're going to finish that, finish that thing. Well, well, when I say finish up, actually I mean that's the, that's the last up. <laughs> We're going to finish up. <laughs> Praise God. We've been talking about uh, the different ups, fill up, speak up, look up, listen up, hook up. All these things are necessary to move up in 2014, and we're going to talk about how to finish up today, because it's, I mean, it's important to finish up. The Apostle Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 4, 2 Timothy 4, 7, hallelujah, I know Paul knew something about finishing up, and he realized it was important to finish up. 2 Timothy 4, 7, said, I, he said, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I've kept the faith. He said, I finished my course. Amen. Paul, Paul was mindful of not just starting and not just doing, but, but finishing. Hallelujah. Oh, we need to be mindful of finishing up. Finishing up in life, finishing up the plan of God. You know, Jesus said in John 4, 34, he said, my meat, my nourishment is to do the will of God and to finish, to finish his work. That ought to be our meat. That ought to be our nourishment. That ought to be what motivates us. I've got to finish. I've got to finish right. I've got to finish strong. I've got to finish my, my race. I've got to finish what, what I've endeavored to start here. I've got to finish the plan of God for my life. I've got, to, I've got to finish out this faith, you know, endeavor. I've got, to, I've, got to, I've got to finish right in different areas of life. I've got to finish with my relationships the right way. I've got to finish this thing out right. Paul also said in Philippians chapter 3, Philippians chapter 3, praise God. Verse 13, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. Hallelujah. You know, if you're going to finish right, you can't be living in the past. So forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth under the things which are before. Notice he goes on to say, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God. In Christ Jesus, in other words, I, I'm pressing toward the goal line. I've got to finish upright. I've got to finish strong. I've got to keep pressing toward the mark, the goal. Hallelujah. You know, we need to stir ourselves up in this area. Uh, you know, it's, like we said, it's good to start right, but we also need to finish right. Finish the way God wants us to finish. God's God's mindful of our finish as well. Thank God we can put things behind us where we've missed it and failed, and we can get a fresh start in God even today. Thank God for that. But even, even with that understanding, we, yeah, we can have a, a fresh start, but we need to still be mindful of finishing strong, of being a good finisher. Glory to God. And, uh, and you may, you know, you may have had some, Difficult challenges last year. You may have, you know, had some, endured some real attacks of the enemy in your life. And, and some of us have faced some obstacles. I'm sure many here have. But you, guess what? You're still standing, right? <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm still standing. How about you? And I can still rejoice and I can begin to believe and declare, you know, this year's going to be better. It's going to get better. Amen. No, that, but again, that's with the finish in mind. Because uh, I'm going to get stronger. I'm getting stronger. I, I, I'm going to be like the psalmist in Psalm 71, 16. I will go in the strength of the Lord. Notice when I look into my future, I'm going with God. And I'm going with his strength. And I've got to do whatever it takes to, to, to stay tight with him and close to him so that I can finish right. Glory to God. In fact, we need to be looking in the word of God to, 
to determine how our future is going to be, how our next year is going to be, how 2014 is going to be. We don't need to be listening to the world to get our determination of that, don't we? Hallelujah. In fact, the psalmist said in Psalm 65, Psalm 65, verse 11, you can, take, you can take this word right here for 2014. Thou crownest the year with your goodness, and your paths drop fat with fatness. Amen. Amen. That means abundance. Praise the Lord. In other words, your paths, when you stay on his path, is going to bring abundance. That's, that's what I'm declaring for 2014. How about you? God's crowning this year with his goodness. See, we get to determine some things about how our year is going to end up. I don't care what we've been through. I don't care what has been thrown at us. Praise God. And I don't care what's going to be thrown at you this year. We're going to finish up good. I'm expecting to finish well. I'm expecting my life to finish well and strong. I'm expecting my, you know, not this year. I'm talking about my life uh, as, as, I, as I look into the future. See, I've got to be careful. I'm talking about 2014. Also, I'm talking about the future here. <laughs> Praise God. But uh, we have to look ahead to our future and say, it's going it's to be good. Why? Because I'm basing it on the Word. And I'm declaring some things based on the Word of God. Hallelujah. God even told me, in, uh, you know, because he said, no, he said we got to stay on his path. God's got some paths for us. How many of God already sees your, your, your future from the future? Oh, praise God. See, God's not caught up in this realm of time like we are. <laughs> he sees the end from the beginning and the beginning from the end. Isaiah 45, 2, God told him, he said, I will go before you and I'll make the crooked places straight. Woo! Hallelujah. See, that's why I'm believing his word because I know he, I, even if something looks crooked in front of me, he'll make it straight if I keep following his path. If I'll stay with his word and keep walking by his spirit and be led by the spirit of God, hallelujah. He'll even break, he'll break uh, in pieces the gates of brass. God, God knows how to bust up stuff in front of you so that you have a clear path. See, God lives in the future as well as in the, in the past. And God has his own time. Now, uh, you know, sometimes we'd wish it would be a little faster in some things. I th sometimes I think God's middle name is Nick o time. <laughs> but he's always on time, isn't he? <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. He's always on time. His arm is never shortened. It's always, he's always got enough for us. He knows how to make a way. He knows how to... Prepare things ahead of time. Make the crooked straight. Well, God's prepared some things for us. That's, that's his nature. That's the way he's been you know, with, with, from the beginning with Israel. God said, I've got a land set out in front of you. It's called the promised land. It's called Canaan land. And it's a land of, of blessing, of milk and honey. So now you've got to follow me. You're going to have to do it. You're going to have to obey me. You're going to have to follow my, my plan. But God's saying, I've always got something out, out here for you to be able to finish strong with. I've always got something out here in front of you. I, I don't, that's why I don't like to think our best years are behind us. Our best years are ahead of us. I'm, I'm talking about personally. I'm talking about for my family. I'm talking about for, for this church. I'm talking about uh, you know, for the, that's how God is. Our best days are yet ahead. God's got good things out there for us. He's got a promised land out there for us. But guess what? We need to go in and take it. We need to be doing the things necessary to possess that promised land. Because there are going to be some giants there. I said there are going to be some giants there. And we're going to have to face those giants if we're going to finish up strong. We're going to have to fight the good fight of faith. Not a fleshly fight. Not fighting people. Not fighting Aunt Sally, not, not fighting other Christians, not fighting the, the, the boss or those on the job. It's fighting the good fight of faith. It's fighting the good fight of faith. 
Amen. You know, you're going to have to learn to fight the right fights if you're going to win in life anyway. Hallelujah. If you're going to finish strong, you know, you got to learn to fight the right fights. I like, I like there's one, one minister I know, he, he, I heard him talk about uh, one time that there's, we, we need to know when to be Teflon Christians and when to be Velcro Christians. You know, Teflon is, you know, nothing, nothing sticks on Teflon, right? Slide, it'll just slide right off. And uh, how many know we need to be that way in life about when the enemy comes and brings his lies? You know, Jesus, he, remember there was one time he said in the book of John, he said, the, Satan has come, but he has nothing in me. You know, he can't whip me. He can't, he can't do what he wants to do in my life because he doesn't have any inroad in my life. He doesn't have full access. In other words, Jesus said, Jesus said when it comes to the devil, I'm Teflon. <laughs> nothing sticks. In fact, when the devil came to him in the wilderness to tempt him and test him, uh, Jesus said, it is written, and guess what? He, nothing stuck. Why? Because he used the word against him. Hallelujah. Well, see, we need to be Teflon Christians when it comes to the devil, his lies, his attacks, when it comes to things like offense, trying to get, it, get in on you and your life. You need to be Teflon. Let that stuff go right off, just slide right off of you. People say bad things about you, slide right off. I'm not letting any of that stick to me. I'm a Tef, but, but we need to know when to be Teflon. We need to know when to be Velcro. <laughs> Amen. Notice when God, when we have God's word, we need to hold on to that word and stick to that word. I mean, don't you dare let go of that sword. Amen. And that word needs to stick to you. It's like, uh, you know, there was a guy named uh, Eleazar uh, in, the, in the Old Testament uh, in 2 Samuel 23. In fact, put up 2 Samuel 23, verse 10, if you would. Uh, 2 Samuel 23, verse 10. He's an Old Testament figure who uh, he had a Velcro attitude towards his assignment that, that God gave him. Uh, and he was fighting the Philistines. When everybody else had left and got weary, he said he arose and he smote the Philistines until his hand was weary and his hand clave unto the sword. And other translations revealed his hand was stuck to the sword. He had fought so long with that sword, his hand was glued to it. <laughs> they had to pry it off of And the Lord wrought a great victory that day and a great spoil that day. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. Well, see, if you'll stick with the sword, the sword will stick with you. How many of that sword, the word of God, needs to be Velcroed to your heart and mind? <laughs> don't you dare let go of that word when trouble comes when the test comes that's a time to be velcro not teflon we don't need to be teflon when it comes oh what did god say about that no i ought to be so stuck to you the word of god ought, ought to be so you know tied to your heart and your mind glory to god we're talking about how to finish strong right how to finish up we're not going to finish up the way we need to finish up if the Word of God is not part of our being, tied into our being. In other words, if, it's not, if that sword isn't tight in your hand or in your heart, really hard in your heart and in your mouth. Glory to God. Glory to God. So we need to fight that good fight. I mean, I'm declaring by the end of 2014, we're going to look back and say, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done this year. Look what the Lord has done in people's lives. Look what the Lord has done in our family. Look what the Lord has done in our finances. Look what the Lord has done in our health. Look what the Lord has done. Amen. Glory to God. Why? Because God's about the finish. He's about the end of your faith. He's about the end of your race as well as the beginning. You know, in the book of Job... I'm sorry, the story of Job, I, I'll refer to, I won't refer to the book of James. Go ahead and turn to James chapter 5 for just a moment. Glory to God. You know, Job is a great story of redemption, isn't he? You know, you know Job is only mentioned once here in the New Testament. It's in the book of James. How many know Job had a bad year out of about 200? Did you know that? 
Yet most, most of the time when anybody thinks of Job, even preachers when they talk about Job, when people refer to Job, it's always, man, that poor old Job. Ooh, boy, he is a rough, rough old Job. Man, I don't want to be like Job. Well, he had a bad year. Out of a couple of hundred. In fact, the New Testament, <laughs> yeah, he went through some stuff. And it was difficult. I mean, it was terrible, some things he went through. But I want you to see what the, what the New Testament tells us to focus on. In, in James chapter 5, verse 10. Take, my brethren, the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering affliction and of patience or endurance, other translations say. One says perseverance. Behold, we count them happy which endure. This is verse 11. You have heard of the patience or the endurance of Job and have seen the end of the Lord. The end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful or compassionate and of tender mercy. Glory to God. In other words, you've seen the outcome, the end, how this finished up. And you see that God brought him out. And you see that God is redemptive. And you see that God is kind and merciful. And you see that Job came out victorious Amen. In the end. Now, again, most people, they talk about Job. Poor old Job. He's so misused and abused. And why? Why did God do that to him? Well, in the first place, God didn't do that to him. Satan did it, if you read the book of Job. You know, the devil tried to get at Job. He said, doesn't, you know, he tried to accuse Job and say, well, doesn't, he doesn't just serve you for nothing, but you, but you put a hedge about him you know the devil came to God about that and he tried to you know the devil tried to get God to take away that protection but uh, God wouldn't do it Satan couldn't do it God wouldn't do it until but but how many of the the hedge of protection did come down the Bible says Job in Job 3 said I've greatly the thing I've greatly feared has come upon me how many know, how many of you know fear will cause the hedge to come down now, if we're going to finish strong, if we're going to finish up the way God wants us to finish up, we can't be living a life of fear. That's, that's important not, if we're going to finish up right, if we're going to finish up strong. You know, the Bible says Satan is as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. The Bible doesn't say he's devouring who, whoever he wants to devour. Satan can only devour those who let the hedge down who don't resist the devil, who open up the door to the devil. So when we, and we've all missed it in these areas where we've let the hedge down. What do we need to do? That we need to get back into faith, get out of fear, get back, get back into the word of God. Do what's necessary. Hallelujah. To keep that hedge up. Well, Job faced a trial. He faced a, a, a terrible, you know, a difficult season in his life. But in the New Testament, which is about redemption, God tells us this is where you need to put your focus on what the outcome was. And, and you need to keep your focus on the outcome of God's redemptive purpose for your life. Even when you miss it, even when you're going through a trial, we need to, we need to get in the word of God and realize God's got a victory plan for you. God has an outcome for you to help you finish victorious, to help you finish strong. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. I mean, even in the, in the scripture, it talks about, you know, the Old Testament reveals even the story of Abraham, story of David, where they made mistakes, where they messed up. But, you know, God, but, but the last thing we see in the New Testament about David or Abraham is, 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 is things about their faith and how they ended up strong and the great victories they had, part of the heroes of faith. See, God saw, he, he sees things in a redemptive way. Yeah, we may miss it, but, that's what, but God still has a plan. Mm -mm -mm. God's still got a plan for you to finish up strong, for you to finish up right, for you to finish up in the will of God. Woo, Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Finishing. <laughs> that's the plan of God. Victorious, getting to the other side, that's the plan of God. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> We're to consider the end. We're to consider Job's endurance. Job's wife said, curse God and die, you know. But, and Job, but he was hearing discouraging words. Listen, you're going to hear discouraging words along the way. But we can't let that be the last word. Job said, I, you know, uh, yeah, thank, I got these three so-called comforters and my, and my wife telling me to curse God and die. Thank God for the Word of God. I say, thank God for the Word of God. You have to stay strong in the Word, even with discouraging words around. Why? Because Job got to the end. Job 42, verse 10. Put up Job 42, verse 10, if you would, there. And let's see how the Bible says that in the, how God turned, God turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. And the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before oh poor old job well i take some of that poor old he was already the richest man in the earth you know and before all that bad stuff happened now god's restored him twice you know praise the lord so he had a bad year out of 200 i know it was some bad stuff that happened to him but what do we need to what does the new testament say focus on the outcome because God's got an outcome. God's got a way for you to finish right. God's got, God's got a way for you to come out on the other side in victory. Hallelujah. That ought to excite every person in here. If you've ever messed up in your life, glory to God. If you've ever felt like you've gotten off course a little bit, because I have and the devil's beat me up about it. I let, you know, I've let the devil beat me up about things. Well, no, i got to get back in uh, and, and look at the end of, of Job, man, how he endured, and look at his outcome. Why? Because the Lord's compassionate. That means he's got an outcome for you and me. He's got plans for you and me that are good. He wants us to finish up strong. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. In fact, verse 12 of, of that says he was blessed uh, in his latter end more than he was, you know, in the former. He was blessed. He was blessed twice as much in the end. Praise God. In fact, look in Isaiah chapter 61. This is the anointing of God that was on, that was on Jesus, and now it's on us. And uh, notice this anointing is available now. Today, because of Jesus, for you and I, because he talks about, you know, he's quoting, uh, this is what was quoted in Luke, what Jesus quoted in, in the book of Luke, that the Spirit of the Lord's upon me, because he's anointed me to preach good news to the, to the meek, uh, sent me to bind up brokenhearted, proclaim liberty to the captives, opening of the prison to them that are bound. Uh, now, now look down in verse 4, and they shall build up, uh, the old waste, and they shall raise up the former desolations. They'll repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks, and the sons of alien shall be your plowmen, your vine dressers. Verse, verse six. But you shall you shall be named the priest of the Lord. He's saying, oh, this is what's going to happen to you. Even though the enemy may have made some inroads in your life, this is what I have for your for you to wrap up with, to end up with. You'll be named the priest of the Lord. Men will call you ministers of our, of our God. You'll eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall you boast yourselves. Verse 7, for your shame you shall have double. Well, that's what happened to Job, wasn't it? And for confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore in their land they shall possess the double. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. It doesn't sound like God has shame in the end for those who will walk in his paths. Those who will just get back on his, uh, on his plan, forget those things that are behind, and press toward the things that are before. God's got increase out there. <laughs> he, he, said, I, I, he said, I've got double for all your trouble. Amen. I've got some double out there. I got, I got increase for the children of God. 
Hallelujah. In fact, I believe, in the, let's just declare 2014 is a year of double in every area. Amen. Glory to God. Everlasting joy shall be on their heads. You know, the blessings of God don't just fall on us like ripe cherries off a tree. How many we need to believe and say? Even the psalmist in Psalm 91 gave all these wonderful blessings of protection and, and provision and, and health. But how, many know, but how many of you know that's tied into the first uh, you know, two verses there, I will say of the Lord. He's my refuge, my strength, my fortress. I will say. Well, we need to be declaring some things. We need to be saying some things. And we need to endure, just like Job. What did God tell us to look at in James 5? Look at the endurance of Job. You know, you got to endure to get to the finish line. If we're going to finish up right, it's going to take some perseverance. God's in the finishing right and finishing well. Even the book of Hebrews, and there's some tough things in the book of Hebrews. But the, one of the main themes of the book of Hebrews is finishing right. Finishing up well. Because there were, I mean, Paul wrote some pretty tough stuff to those who were turning their back on the Lord. Because they were under pressure to do that. You know, there are people yet today in, in this world, that it's, it's, it's on the rise, it's on the increase of, of persecution for people's faith all over the world. Some are dying right now in different nations of the world for their faith. We haven't tasted it to that degree here yet. But even if it came to that, I mean, we still don't need to be people that turn our back on the Lord and renounce. Of course, the, the Hebrew Christians, they were being pressured to renounce their faith. And Paul would tell them, don't cast away your confidence. He said, it matters that you finish up right here. we got to finish right. And the Bible is very clear, and I'm not going to teach you on this right now, but the Bible is very clear that there is a potential for people to lose their salvation. You just read the book of Hebrews, where, where it's not just automatic that you can live any way you want and then, then believe, then, then let sin harden you to a point to where you turn your back on the Lord and think you can still go to heaven. The Bible talks about the sin unto death. Now, I'm not going to teach on it right now. I've taught on it. It's been a while. But what am I saying here? It's just like with, with the Bible talks about it. He talked about it in Hebrews, the deceitfulness of sin, which causes people's hearts to be hardened. He said, don't be deceived by, that, by the, the, what sin can do in your life because it can get you to a point where you say, I don't want Jesus anymore. Some have done that. Some have done that. They say, well, I don't want the Lord anymore because they, they don't want to be bought. They, they like their lifestyle. Hallelujah. Now, I believe in being eternally secure if you want to stay secure. But, the, but God is still very interested. He, I mean, uh, one of the main themes of the book of Hebrews is you need to finish up right. You need to finish this thing. Don't just start this thing. Finish this thing when it comes to your walk with the Lord and even up to the point of your salvation. Hallelujah. Amen. But also in the realm of faith, finishing out, don't cast away your confidence right in the middle. Why, several times Hebrews talk about hold fast to your confession of faith. Why do you have to hold fast to it? Because the devil's trying to get you to not finish. But you got to keep saying what the word says, no matter what it looks like, no matter what it seems like, no matter what it feels like. Whew. It doesn't matter if it looks like the devil's winning. I'm going to keep holding fast my confession of faith. doesn't matter if it doesn't look like my needs are going to be met. I'm going to keep holding fast to the confession that God supplies all my needs. Doesn't matter if it looks like my kids aren't going to serve the Lord or, or, or turn, turn around and follow the Lord. I'm going to hold fast to my confession that my whole household is saved and knows the Lord Jesus. I'm not going to let go of that. 
I'm not going to let go. Why? Because God expects me to finish right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. And I'm going into the promised land. And I'm going to have what God says is mine. Hallelujah. Which means I'm going to shout till the walls fall down. Which means I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep treading. I'm going to keep walking. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise God. I'm going to keep joy. Oh, I'm going to keep a joy in my heart. Joy in my mouth. Why? Because the Bible says when you're going through tests and trials, James said, you got to count it all joy. That's how you're going to get to the finish line. You got to count it joy when it doesn't look like something that brings joy. <laughs> When in the natural, it doesn't produce any joy. When it looks like you're losing, when it looks like you're going under, what are we to do? We're to count it all joy. That's fighting the good fight of faith. And we're to stay in the fight. If you're going to finish, you got to learn how to fight. You got to learn how to believe. You got to learn how to be Teflon and Velcro at the right time. And you got to learn how to rejoice. That's my four points right there. Just thought I'd wrap them up real quick. You got to count it all joy. Count it all joy. Why? Because the devil doesn't want you to get to the finish line in any area of your life, in your faith, in the things you believe in God for, in your purpose. In the, Jesus said, my meat is to do the will of God. Paul said, I, I, nothing in this world moves me. Acts 20, 24. Nothing Move, I'm not going to let none of these things move me. The, the pressures I'm facing, the attacks I'm facing, the devil trying to stop me from doing the will of God. Said, That's not going to move me. He said, I'm going to finish my course with joy. With joy. That's, listen, that's our, like what Jesus said, my meat is to finish the work. Your meat needs to be to finish in life. What God's called you to do what God's put in your heart to do, being faithful to God in the local church, being faithful to God, standing on his word in your life, living a holy life, living, living a faith-filled life, do, just doing the will of God, be, living a, being a living witness, a living testimony, believing God for finances so you can be a greater blessing to the kingdom. It's not time to go diminish and go down and, and have less. It's time for us to enter in and press into more. Why? Because there, there's a world to reach out there, beloved. There's a church to build. There are things we need to keep doing. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. We need the fire of God in our belly again. We got, and we're going to have to keep that. We got to stir that up. I mean, listen, we've all been there where you're just kind of, well, let's just coast a little while. No, we can't have that coasting mentality about life. Well, we got to finish up. I said, we got to finish up. We got to get the job done for the Lord. <laughs> Glory to God. We got to keep our joy level up. Praise God. See, we're going to have to apply our faith against the pressures of life. Why? It's just like, you know, it's just like going to the gym. You know, you you can go walk by all the barbells and all the machines and say, "Wow, man, that that those things will make you strong," and then just walk right out and t tell the person at the desk, "Bye bye, I'll see you later." <laughs> what are we gonna have to do? We have to we're gonna have to stop at one of those machines every once in a while, or a couple of them, or, or go to the bar you know, barbells and, and all and go over there. We're gonna have to we have to do what? You got to apply the pressure against the against you got to apply something against the trial against the weight well see trials don't make you strong you may have heard that before sounds religious trials don't make you strong trials can kill you weights can kill you i've seen guys i've seen guys I, yeah, i've been around some heavy lifting at one time in my life and, uh, and, and, and did, did a little of that too, but, uh, but I, I've seen guys didn't have a spotter, you know, somebody to help them and they're trying to lift this heavy weight and it came right down on their neck and a couple of guys had to run over and pull, pick up the bar, you know, the barbell and, and, and plop it back on the ground before the guy died. I've seen that happen more than once. Hot shot. 
Trying to be a hot shot. Yeah, I can lift that. <laughs> that weight almost killed him. Trials will kill you unless you apply the proper pressure against the trial. You got to count it all joy when that trial is trying to choke your life out. You got to count. You got to stay in faith. You got to say, no, I'm going to finish this thing. I'm finishing out the plan of God for my life. Hallelujah. How many finishers we got in the house this morning? You're finishing. I'm gonna, I, if, you, if you don't finish, I'm going to whip you. <laughs> Amen. No, I care about you finishing. God put me here to help you finish. Amen. If that means I have to meddle sometime, I meddle. But if I, I'm, I'm mainly going to try to build you up and, and feed you the word. Why? Because we need the word. We need to be strong in the word if we're going to finish strong. If we're going to finish our course and hallelujah. Do what God's called us to do. Don't you want to be there when Jesus, when Jesus welcomes us in and says, well done, thou good and faithful, finishing servant. servant. You are a finisher. I don't want to just barely sneak in by the hair on my chinny chin chin and just slide in barely under the bar. I'm, woo, I barely made it in. No, thank God for his mercy, though. But thank God, thank God we can finish strong. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Well, let's just thank him for, for that this morning. Thank him. Let's praise him. Some of you may be facing some things in your life this morning, facing some trials and tests. <laughs> oh, God's got a, he said, look at the outcome. Look at the end of Job. Hallelujah. God's got victory ahead for you. God's got blessing ahead for you. <laughs> God, God's got strength ahead for you because I go in the strength of the Lord. Thank you, Father. Father, I thank you for your blessing on every person here. Father, I thank you for your plan for every person in this place. Father, I thank you. Thank you that it's a good plan. It's a plan for a blessed outcome. But Father, I also know that your word says to he that overcomes, he'll receive a crown. So Father, I thank you for overcomers. I thank you for finishers. And Father, we consecrate ourselves. As, a, as this local body of believers, we consecrate ourselves fresh and anew, Father, to be finishers, to not even consider drawing back, not even consider stepping down in life and not finishing the purpose and the plan that you've laid before us in your word and by your spirit to our hearts, the things you've put in us to do and to fulfill hallelujah how many of you purpose that with me this morning well give him praise for it hallelujah thank you father we praise you we thank you for your plan thank you for your provision father we count it all joy right now ha ha ha, ha. glory be to god the things that we face in life father i claim this is a year of double say this is a year of double for me I claim, I claim double. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Double blessing, double increase, double favor. This is a year of it. I'm moving up in 2014. Father, we're moving up as a church. We're moving up as families in this church. We're moving up to do your will. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.